everybody and welcome back to More Than Just a Dog. My name is Kayla and today we're talking about three big differences between the sport of obedience and rally. So let's get started. One of the most important things to know about talking about obedience and rally is that rally is actually derived from the sport of obedience. Obedience was created in the 1930s by a woman named Helen Whitehouse Walker who had standard poodles and wanted to prove to the world that poodles weren't just a pretty face. They were also athletic and very intelligent. So she created the sport of obedience to demonstrate just that. Rally is based on the concept of teamwork, and arguably in dog sports, one of the most impressive demonstrations of teamwork comes from obedience's heel work. But it does look a little bit different than that that you find in rally. In obedience, whether you enter novice, beginner novice, or all the way up to utility B, heel work, generally speaking, looks relatively similar. You know that when you enter the ring, your dog is always going to be asked to demonstrate their normal heel, their fast heel, and their slow heel. You also know that they're going to be asked to demonstrate at least one left turn, one right turn, one about turn, and one halt. But in rally, once the judge says forward, kind of anything is possible. Sometimes the dogs are asked to do those left turns, right turns, fasts and slows, but sometimes they're asked to do things that are way fancier, like spin next to you, and sometimes you're asked to spin alongside them. Sometimes the dog is asked to go around you, or you're asked to go around the dog. Sometimes the dog is expected to leave you to go take a jump and then return. Sometimes the dog is asked to leave you to go and sit next to a cone. Sometimes you're asked to do pivots to the left or to the right. Sometimes 90 degrees, sometimes 180 degrees. Sometimes they want you to go in a full 360 degree circle. So rally and obedience heel work definitely look different. But again, one of the most amazing things about heel work is it's a perfect demonstration of the teamwork that's possible between a human and their canine partner. Number two consistency and predictability. I said anything was kind of possible when it comes to rally heel work, and I kind of meant it. One of the biggest differences for me as a handler when we're talking about obedience versus rally is that obedience is much more predictable. Every time I go into a utility class with Maya, I know we're going to do a signal exercise, two scent discrimination exercises, a directed retrieve, a moving stand for exam, and directed jumping. But with Rally, I don't know what behaviors are going to be asked of us until we actually get to the show that day. We pick up our maps and we have the opportunity to walk the course. In Rally competition, you don't know what the course is going to look like. And by the time you get to Masterclass, you need to know more than 300 signs as the handler and your dog needs to know all the behaviors that correspond to those signs. So when you approach one and you ask your dog to perform it, they understand what they're being asked. So that's one of, the, one of the biggest differences, in my opinion, as a handler, is that in obedience, I know exactly what I'm going to ask my dog to do that day. But in rally, it's a surprise the day of the show. It's also the reason that I actually get way more nervous for a rally competition than I do for an obedience trial. Number three, praise and reward. Whether you're a handler or you're an audience member, one of the biggest differences that you'll probably almost automatically see when it comes to rally versus obedience is that in rally, you're allowed to talk to your dog as much and as often as you want. The only thing that's really off limits is any harsh words or strong voices. But you can encourage your dog, you can praise them when they're doing something right, you can also ask them to do the same thing multiple times if you need to. So for example, this past weekend, one of the classes that Maya was in, an excellent B class, one of the signs we were asked to do was for me to send her away to a jump and she had to return to me before I could pass the jump. And she didn't hear my first command, she didn't understand my second command, and then by the time I gave the third command, she finally figured it out. But in obedience, if you have to ask for something more than once, almost always that's an NQ or non-qualifying score. In obedience, one of the other things that's important to know is that you're only allowed to speak to your dog under certain circumstances. So it's very specific in the rule book when you can and cannot talk to your dog. So for example, if I set up to do a heel pattern in obedience, which again is the fast, slow, normal, left, right, about, and halt, that heel pattern most of the time is almost completely silent. With the exception of occasionally you can give a command like, let's go, which means we're moving forward now. It's also important to know that in obedience, you can definitely praise your dog, but you can only do it at certain points. So when the judge asks, are you ready before any exercise, you're allowed to say yes. And then when they 
give the command to continue with the exercise, whatever that exercise may be, chances are you're not supposed to praise your dog until the judge says exercise finished. But the second your judge says exercise finished, you can praise your dog all the way through until the next exercise. It's something that we often forget as handlers. It's not that praise is off limits in obedience, it's just meant to be under certain circumstances. There are way more differences and similarities between obedience and rally, so this video probably deserves a part two and maybe even a part three. And if you're interested in part two or part three to this video, do me a favor and tell me that you liked it just by hitting that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all about either sport, just leave those questions in the comment section below and I'm happy to try to answer them for you. And if you wanna see more content like this, all you have to do is hit subscribe and ring the bell. That way you get alerted every single time we post a new video. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me for this one. I hope you liked it and pass it on. See ya.